record. Well, for those of you who started watching What in the World of Paul Seaburn on Tuesday, August 1st, I think it's those gremlins that you keep talking about, Paul. Or aliens. It could be aliens. Yeah. They came into our sound production. So we are now recording from this point forward, and we're going to try to get some answers about what just happened. So okay, here we are. Okay. So, so Karen, do should I uh, go back to the our previous story? You or sure. Do you want to continue? Yeah. Okay. All right. Because because we 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 missed those. All right. So um, let me look at my time here and get our time straight. So um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm not going to tell you what's coming up because um, that that could have been the gremlin that got us in trouble in the first place. Exactly. So let's just go back to California for a second. Where uh, <laughs> this is it's going to sound funny in my head now. Uh, a man in California inherited a box from his mother, and uh, she had it for for 30 years in a locked drawer. He didn't know anything about it. So um, you know he's cleaning out her house. He finds the drawer, uh, the the key, the drawer. He opens it up, and inside the box is bone fragment. So he he finds some more information, and it turns out she thought that the bone fragments were pieces of the skull of Ludwig von Beethoven, the, the famous composer, Ludwig von Beethoven. Um, you know, he says that he, he didn't know anything about this, although he knew that his uh, great great uncle was a doctor who had um, way back when in the 1800s examined some of the remains of Beethoven to try and figure out possibly why Beethoven went deaf. So, uh, you know, it was, um, that was one amazing thing. The other amazing thing was when he went into the drawer, sitting on top of the box was a, um, uh, a, a stale old hoagie, which means that that hoagie was a roll over Beethoven. I'm not oh, gonna... Okay, <laughs> good one. A roll over Beethoven. Um, tell Tchaikovsky, you know, I'll get... So they traced it back to 1863 to his uncle. Um, now, they, they still don't know why he went deaf. Chuck Berry had a theory, you know, speaking of rollover Beethoven. Chuck Berry thought that the problem with Beethoven was either um, he was either suffering from rock and pneumonia or possibly rolling arthritis or the boogie woogie blues, all of which contributed to his temperature rising, which could have affected his hearing. There you have it. Yeah. Sure. We should have listened to Chuck, John. Yeah. We should have listened to Chuck. I agree. Uh -huh. I agree. So I, I, I looked up the rollover Beethoven because uh, it's such a great song, such a classic beginning of the rock and roll era. And it turns out Chuck Berry wrote it while he was still living at home as a kid, teenager, I guess. Uh, his sister, Lucy, I think her name was, was uh, uh, taking piano lessons and she was taking classical piano to, in Chuck Berry's family. And uh, so there was a big argument because he wanted to use the piano for, for rock and she wanted to use it for classic. Luckily, Chuck Berry won. Otherwise, the name of the song would have been Roll Over Bill Haley um, <laughs> in the comments. So, uh, you know, <laughs> we're so lucky. <clears throat> and I was going through the lyrics because, I, you know, you, you basically you hear the same lyrics in your head over and over again. So I went a little deeper. And Chuck has all these messages in there, shout outs to his friends of the time. He says, you know, he, he talks about Blue Suede Shoes, which was the Carl Perkins song. The other one was, he says, hey, diddle diddle, I'm playing my fiddle. I'm a playing my fiddle. Now, that, that's from the nursery rhyme, but it's also a shout out to Bo Diddley, who is also a friend of Chuck's. Um, but it was not because of his name. Uh, it was because Bo Diddley actually played the fiddle before he became the rock legend that that we all know him, a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, another one. Um, so I thought that was a uh, bit of a trivia trivia boost there for us. Okay, so another another um, deal on uh, a little story on music. This one comes from England, University of Southampton. Experts there took data from um, music, lyrics and and um, and music, and fed it into one of these artificial intelligent uh, programs is like chat GTP, GPT in order to see if it would generate listenable 
music. And it turns out that this particular one, after crunching for a while, actually came out with a song. The name of the song is Delirious Ecstasy. Now, I was blown away because, I don't know if you know this, but Delirious Ecstasy was a nickname we had for John back in college. And the way that came from, we were watching John eat spaghetti one day, and somebody said, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> You're giving our so, secrets away again, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> John loves his, loves his Italian food. Uh, so the other thing is that, that, that I thought of, uh, because it was, we didn't really have a nickname for John. Uh, we had better nicknames for John. The, uh, this sounds like a Frank Zappa song, Delirious Ecstasy. Um, and, and the lyrics, even more so, sound like Frank Zappa. The, uh, one of the lyrics was, uh, lines was, you're my biohazard baby. Wow, where did that come from? I don't from? want to be a biohazard baby. I don't want to listen to any song with a biohazard no. baby. Yeah. And then, please don't cry for me. Oh, you don't. Very Zappa-ish type of lyric there. So um, I thought, I, I'm hoping that we don't get artificial intelligent music. It's just going to, I hope we don't get artificial intelligent actors and writers and all that other stuff. It, we, we need to stop it now and um, and use it as a tool for for good, <laughs> not for evil. <laughs> and by evil, I mean anything that affects my income. <laughs> so, anyways, all right. Now, it, this is where we ran into trouble here. So, let's see if we don't have if we still have the problem. So, McDonald's, the McDonald's doesn't need any more money, and yet they continue to try to make more. So, McDonald's executives have um, uh, just announced this week that they're going to open up a new restaurant chain um, with instead of Ronald McDonald as the mascot, they're gonna use a mascot, an obscure mascot from the 1980s and 90s called, uh, what's it called? Cosmic, like Cosmic, C-O-S-M-C. And this mascot was a, was an alien. So John, I don't know if you remember this, so I'm gonna put a photo up here. There you go, there's a photo of this particular uh, mascot the uh, do you, you know, you know, I, I, Karen, I, I don't recall this uh this character no no so so um they they said that the the restaurant's going to be very similar to uh regular Mc, mcdonald's but it'll have all the dna of mcdonald's but with his own unique personality that's what they said uh, the only thing they would say about the menu is that unfortunately the shake machines won't work there either so that's oh, the way you'll okay. know. You yeah. know they're owned by McDonald's. Yeah. The, the alien ball pit. They're going to have an alien ball pit instead of a regular ball pit. Um, which the, the big the catch is, is that some of the balls will be actual aliens. And you need to find them before they start probing you. So a little mm. bit of excitement there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, uh, would you get into one of those ball pits Wait, after all that's gone on in there? Uh, no. Maybe the aliens might no, be a better. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. No, no. Now, they described it as a um, a round Sputnik-like object. Now, if you're old enough to get that reference, what the Sputnik was, <laughs> um, <laughs> and you're eating at McDonald's, you've obviously ingested so many preservatives from from eating there that you can attribute your longevity to to being a McDonald's fan. Right. Uh, Sputnik, yeah, but by, you know, John, you know, Sputnik was the original Russian satellite, the first satellite ever launched into space. Right, um, I understand. Yeah, so so this, for, for those of you who don't recognize Cosmic, McDonald's handbook says that Cosmic is an alien who speaks in a hip and unique mixture of old and new Earth slang. So, sounds like us, I guess. Um, <laughs> or it, it sounds like something that could run for president, old and new hip slang. Um, sure. it, in fact, the, um, uh, the, 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 the commercials show Ronald and Grimace, uh, who the, the big uh, Grimace, I think is the big purple, purple mascot right. walking down a trippy, they, they, they call it a trippy looking path in McDonald land. 
uh, when this strange object lands and this this cosmic comes out and he says hi ho earth people cosmic here i popped in from outer space on a trade mission so he could run for president you know that's what they're talking about now is trade missions he'd be a perfect candidate for president goofy looking alien um so <laughs> one, of the, one of the other commercials uh, ronald and cosmic become friends so they go to uh, mars to a mcdonald's on mars and they go through a fly through window now you know we're all of a certain age we grew up watching the jetsons we've all been waiting for flying cars john already has a garage space set aside for his flying car all he needs <laughs> is the flying car right john that's right paul that is right that is true it, it's in it's the second floor right above his, his his regular car um so i don't think we're gonna see flying cars at mcdonald's in our lifetime um I, although i think floating you know on water through a might happen in the very near future but sad to say Okay, let, let, let's get past McDonald's here because so, so before it starts another problem for us. So here, this is a, a food story from Japan. And you know, we get so many strange foods from Japan. So this is another fast food. And I'm gonna put the photo up here so you can see it while I describe it. Um, oh, that's not it. The, um, I guess maybe I don't have it. I'll go back to Ronald McDonald for a second. So you know what? I'm going to uh, oh no this is this is <laughs> boy I'll tell you what that 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 audio thing really really messed things up Where in my head here so yep. so this is a story from Japan but it's not about food it's about a dog and a, and a man so this guy his name is Toko we've talked about this before he spent twenty thousand dollars on a specially designed dog costume that he wears and he has been working for months and months and months training to turn himself into a dog and i have a photo up here of a what looks like a collie it's actually a man in a collie costume oh my god uh, yeah he spent twenty thousand dollars it was his dream lifelong dream to become a dog he actually went out in public for the first time last week he fooled some people he really fooled some people, he even fooled some dogs um, by begging, rolling over, and playing fetch. Um, unfortunately, uh, he also fooled a vet, and now he has to wear one of those big collars uh, uh -huh. until his butt heals. So, the um, at least the, you know the vet could have done more damage than that. But uh, <laughs> he, he, oh, he, is, <laughs> is, is that the image on the right? Is that the image on the right? All three of them, John. All three oh, of those three? images. Are, are, yeah, Why those would are he all want to hands. do this? I don't know. You know, oh. he's got money and, and time on his hands, I guess. I guess. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 he says it was his lifelong dream was to become a dog. So um, hmm. uh, he refuses to reveal, reveal his true identity, which is, makes it <laughs> a little suspicious. Yeah. Um, wait, I think I have another photo here. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here's one where he a dog encounters him. And the dog didn't bark at him. You know, there's videos of all this. The dog didn't bark. You know, the dog kind of went up to him and sniffed. So I, I don't, I don't know if it sniffed his butt, which would have been a true sign that the dog accepted <laughs> it. Um, yeah, here's uh, it. Uh, he gives his paw to the girl over here. There's another one of him rolling over. Um, yeah. So he refuses to reveal his true identity. He's waiting until the actor strike is over okay. because he wants to get paid for doing this. Yeah. Um, he wants to be a live action Lassie. That's what he wants to be. Um, so now every time I bring up Lassie, I always think of the line, Timmy fell down the well, go get help. <laughs> right? I looked it up. Do you know how many times that was said in Lassie uh, uh, episodes? Yeah. And then I'll, I'll give you a hint. There, uh, there were there were multiple kids. Timmy was only in seven seasons. There was also a John, and there was another kid. So Timmy, there was a Timmy owned Lassie for seven seasons. How many times do you think they said Timmy fell down the well? A thousand. 
<laughs> John, John, I'll, I'll give you a hint. Lower. Oh. <laughs> I say 250. 250. Okay. It's lower than that. It's zero. Really? No one, yeah. No one, Timmy never fell down the well. No one ever said, go get help. Timmy fell down the well. Oh. Uh, it, it, it's an urban legend and, uh. and it's spreading since the 1950s when Lassie was on, on TV. Uh, although in the last season, they said that um, Lassie wanted a raise. And when she didn't get the raise, she pushed her agent down the well. But um, <laughs> that, that, didn't, that didn't get filmed. So, okay. <laughs> Running. The only other show where, where, where something like this happened was on the Big Bang Theory. I don't know if you remember this in the Big Bang Theory, when Sheldon uh, tossed Penny down the well because he wanted to make a wish that he would win the Nobel Prize. Um, <laughs> Penny. Yeah. I know. I don't need to explain it. I do, I'm explaining it for myself. The um, okay. So back to food. Let's see if we can get out of this hole here. Speaking of being in a hole. So Skittles, everybody's favorite colored um, uh, candy, multicolored candy, and it has worked out a deal with. Get ready for this. French's mustard. You know where this is going. They're coming out with a mustard flavored Skittles. Yep, there it is right there. Yellow Skittles, mustard flavored Skittles. Yes. Uh, yeah, celebrate National Mustard Day. Like, you know, we need mustard Skittles to celebrate Mustard no, Day. I really mustard like mustard flavored. as a condiment, but as a candy, I don't know if that's going to Mustard go as a candy, there you go, yeah. The, wow. Does it sound appealing to you, John? No, it doesn't, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's too bad because they're looking for somebody uh, in the commercial to, to do a commercial. What they need is somebody who has actually said, you know what would go good on my hot dog? Candy. Uh, <laughs> you know? Well, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. John obviously isn't one. I don't think Karen is. I'm certainly not. Anybody out there, if, if, if that's you, contact Frenchers or contact the people that make Skittles. I don't even know who makes Skittles. Uh, the Skittle company. <laughs> the uh, mustard <laughs> candy makers, obviously. Yeah, mustard candy. That sounds like the stuff that that weird family down the street used to pass out on Halloween. <laughs> you know, remember you would go, you'd be coming up to the house, and these kids would be coming down the steps with with these weird looks on their faces, like "Don't go there." They pass out mustard candy and 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 candied squash. You don't want to go there. You know those yeah. kind of houses. Or they gave you pennies, which was the worst thing. Um, sure. So, anyways, here's a. <laughs> oh, here's the, here's the other. Here's the one I was looking for. So this was this is another food that comes from Japan. This comes from Aoki's Pizza in Japan, big chain in Japan. There's a photo of the pizza. I will describe it to you. It is the ice cream fondue pizza. They call it a summer adventure pizza with a with a crust that has a bowl baked into the middle of it where they put vanilla ice cream so that you can dip. And this is a pepperoni and sausage pizza, or mushroom pizza, it looks like right here. So you can take your pepperoni and sausage, sausage or mushroom pizza and dip it into vanilla ice cream and eat it. Have your dessert and your pizza at the same time. John? Not going for it, sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> it, but I'll tell you what, it's Haagen-Dazs ice cream, at least according to the ad. Does that make a difference, Karen? Does that make a difference to you? If Absolutely it's not. I am <laughs> sick. Yeah. Well, I it's, think it's quality it's, ice cream to go with it, folks. At least it's a quality ice cream, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. I think if you if you ordered it to something like this in New York, you know, I'd like a slice of pizza with ice cream. They would say in their best New York accent, that's disgusting. Yeah. Um, they would say, forget right? about it. Forget about it. <laughs> yeah, forget about it. That's right. <laughs> Although I'm sure there's single guys out there who have eaten this. You know, you get up on, on Sunday morning after staying out late and, uh, you know, there's nothing in the refrigerator but pizza and ice cream and beer. What do you, there's breakfast, sounds to me. <laughs> okay. Gotta serve the purpose. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. That's right. So 
Speaking of old rock and rollers, to reference back to Chuck Berry, Mick Jagger celebrated his, get ready, 80th birthday last week. Mick Jagger, wow. 80 years old. Yeah, yeah. He's, um, in, in age and looks, he's like a Galapagos turtle of, <laughs> of rock and roll. <laughs> in fact, if you don't remember what he looks like, there he is right there. Good old Sir Mick Jagger. Uh, <laughs> You know how old he is? He's 80 years old. He's so old, he finally got some satisfaction, but he can't remember how. Uh, That's how old he is. He, I can understand so that old. one. Yeah, he's so old, instead of Gimme Shelter, he sings Gimme Bow Movement. Oh. Um, he, he's, wait, there's more. He sold his microphone also doubled as a mini oxygen tank. He's oh. so old. He's had, he's had his 1,019th nervous breakdown. And if that's not enough, one more. He sold, they gave his fitness trainer his Lifetime Achievement Award. <laughs> that's how old he is. You know, I put that, Karen, Karen mentioned, I put that up on Facebook this week. And a number of people pointed out that despite the fact that Mick does, his, at least in the facial area, looks 80 years old, he still jumps around the stage like he's a, a young he does 60 50 or you know he, he certainly is is keeping himself in good shape oh he's high energy no kidding yeah yeah as opposed to ron uh ron wood and um and uh keith richard who stand there smoking <laughs> no <answer. laughs> and that's how they got so old <laughs> okay so john i know john's been waiting for this uh, i i i you know, we in our in our original intro to um, to the show, they've got cut off before. I mentioned that this is a this is one of our our monster weeks, and I've got three different monster news items uh, coming up right now with photos. Uh, so stick around. One of them is a skunk ape with a baby. One of them is the champ, the Loch Ness or the uh, Loch Ness version of the it, that lives in Lake Champlain. And another one is the monster of the River Thames from London. So, all three coming up. So, to, you know, get 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 ready to uh, be amazed. So this is um, uh, the first one. So this is a skunk ape, uh, which this comes from the Rocky Mountain Sasquatch Organization. You know, big research organization in the Bigfoot world. Uh, this comes from from Florida. A Florida trail cam. The headline says Florida trail cam captures skunk ape holding infant Bigfoot. Now, this is not a kidnapping, you know, Sasquatch and Bigfoot are the same creature. Uh, so let me let me start. We're going to start with a, a far away photo first. Uh, so, you, I, you know, you have to look pretty closely to see the baby in this particular photo. But that's the, uh, the, the, the original photo that showed up on a game cam uh, that somebody set up to, for deer or whatever it is they were looking for. Uh, here's a second one here. This is a close-up. Now, uh, again, I, it, it, because it's a close-up, it, it's much more blurry. Uh, but you can see in this one what looks like it might be a furry head in front of the head of what they claim is Bigfoot. Um, and then if you can't see it, we have the ever-popular <laughs> red circle. <laughs> it looks like an ape. But it it certainly does. I was going to ask if it reminded you of any animal. Uh, yeah, it looks definitely. definitely no question yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. So the 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 they quoted the person who whose camera it was didn't reveal their name. He says, "My buddy that researches the Florida skunk ape was sent this from our neck of the woods. If it's a fake, it's a good one. What do you think it is? I see a baby and its fingers." on the mom's nose when I mess with the color filter. Now, you know, I'd have to look awfully close to see fingers in there anywhere. Um, I, I, John, again, yeah, you think it's an A, you think it looks more like an ape? Yeah, I think I think the the creature in the back or, you know, the, the black part looks like an ape. And then what's in front is really hard to determine, if you ask me. I don't know if that's a that's a baby Sasquatch you're saying? I, I don't know. I, I, no, I'm not, no, I, I don't see it. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I agree. It's, a, it's a pretty doubtful. It does look like an ape. It could have been, um, 
you know, an escape gorilla, you know, could it somebody keeping it as a pet, sadly, or, um, or, you know, there's been nothing on the news about a gorilla escaping from the Miami Zoo or wherever this might be. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so, so the, <laughs> although maybe it escaped from another state and they heard that uh, Florida is where bananas go to die. So they oh. went to Florida. To, <laughs> I know we're not supposed to get political on what in the world. Uh, that's an obscure political reference right there. That's, the, that's, a, that's all I'm going to say. Um, but, you know, so they said it. They thought it was a skunk ape. So they must have got close enough to smell it. Skunk apes smell like a wet dog on a wet rug when there's no Febreze around and the, and the house has been cooped up. You know, they, they just smell awful. Okay. So now this, the next one is the Lake Champlain monster. Now I've done stories for Mysterious Universe on the Lake Champlain on Champ before. And as a result of that, I become friends with, with the, the uh, leading expert uh, in Champ, the, Lake, uh, the uh, Lake Champlain monster. Her name is Katie Elizabeth. Katie uh, in the off season lives in Florida. On her way up, believe it or not, at speak, on her way to Lake Champlain because she has a boat there, she gives tours, and she does research. So she's going to be researching this. I mean, we may have an update on it. But I, uh, th- So this comes from uh, a guy who uh, was fishing. He was trout fishing on Lake Champlain uh, up near the Canadian border, he says. And um, um, they call it Champ. Some people call it Chomp because they want to scare away uh, nosy tourists. But Champ is, yeah. is the name yeah. and and uh and katie by the way is the first one to get it on radar so this is actually the second sonar uh photo in existence so this this uh guy's name is scott thurber and he said he was fishing for trout near the border uh, uh with canada and he had a garmin echo map uhd sonar on his boat which is a special sonar for high detail now before we go any further I think it's unfair to trout to have that kind of equipment on your boat when you go fishing. That that's not sport anymore. You know, (laughs) it's back when we were. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, John. You know, we went down to the creek with a with a fishing rod and a hook and and the worms we dug out from our yard, and you picked a spot that looked like it had fish in it, and you threw your line in, and that was it. That was sport. I don't know. This is this is a little too much for me. So anyway, it, it defeats the uh, purpose, really. <laughs> it does. Yeah, it defeats the purpose. It defeats the purpose. So um, the um, and what they should do to, to to go a little further on this theme, if it's fair for the for the fishermen to have sonar, then it should be fair for the trout to have radar detectors. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Now, about as fair I, I had, Yeah, I, th- unfortunately, this couldn't happen in Ohio because radar detectors are illegal in Ohio. But it says in the in the law that they're illegal in a passenger vehicle, which I don't think that any trout in a river like the Cuyahoga for example would be traveling in a vehicle. I don't think that would qualify, Paul. Yeah. Oh. Now, a barracuda might be, but <laughs> not, not a trout. But who made barracudas? John, do you remember who made barracudas? Was that Plymouth Dodge. or? Dodge. Dodge. I'm going to say Dodge. Okay. Okay. Dodge barracuda. That sounds about right. All right. So um, so he's looking for trout. He doesn't find a trout. What he, what he finds is this. Now, for those of you who can't see it, um, it's a it's a sonar image. It slices. Um, uh, so, so this is a deli monster. It's not just a, a regular monster. Um, but the the on the left is what looks like a long neck, and then in the middle, which is what looks like a, a body, like a dinosaur body. Underneath it are at least a couple of legs. There might be six legs. I mean, I say or or fins. I see four. In the back, there might be something else there, and then a tail behind it. <clears throat> so um, I don't know, John. Any thoughts on that? You know, the, the, 
I mean, I see what you said. I mean, and it could be that uh, it, it's uh, a photograph of that image, right? But it could it could be anything else. I mean, I, I don't. It, in fact, in a way, I think this is even less conclusive than the uh, blurry photos we have of uh, Bigfoot. Because, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I mean, could it be could it be a creature? I guess, but it's it, it's no, it's it's too undefined, too undefined to me. Pretty, yeah, it's pretty obscure. Uh, although it it is it is shaped like a monster, so yeah, agreed, I do, agreed, right? Uh -huh. Pile of seaweed, I don't know. You know, maybe uh, beer cans, a big bundle of beer cans, and a garbage bag. <laughs> <from Canada. laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that Katie Elizabeth, when she gets up there, will uh, will give us a definitive uh, answer on that. So I'll be checking in with her. We may have an update next week. Now, next one comes from the River Thames. I I hate this river because it's spelled T H A M E S. Thames. Thames is what it should be, not Thames. The British not only do they drive on the wrong side of the road, they put their 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 vowels and their consonants and their diphthongs all on the wrong side of the road too. <laughs> None of that is is T H A M E S is not Thames. It's Thames. But anyways, I will defer to our British listeners for the story on the River Thames. So um, this is this is south of Scotland, by the way. So it's a long way from Loch Ness. This tourist snapped a photo. And now, where do you see this photo, John and Karen and everybody out there watching on YouTube land? So this is what they saw in the River Thames. Um, it appears to be a reptilian, the head of a reptilian kind of creature peeking out of the river. And they posted it on Reddit, the, you know, the big media site, Reddit. And boy, it just went viral. People from all over the world were commenting on what this might be. Uh, some people said it looked like the Loch Ness monster. Some people it looked like a giant snake, the head of a giant snake, or even a giant eel. Uh, you know, the, there was a snake skin that was found on the River Thames um, a couple years ago. Uh, some people said it looked like King Charles swimming, and he forgot to put his uh, sunblock on. Oh, um, that's uncalled for, Paul. That's uncalled for. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Here, oh, is it here? Maybe this one's better. Some people said it looked like Boris Johnson looking for the comb that he dropped in the river. Oh, um, oh boy. So I, I'll ask both of you. Let's go. Let's start with Karen first. Karen, what does it look like to you? Well, I have to say this is the first photo that I can look at and say that it looks like some sort of reptile, but it's unless the face is blown up. It's a monstrous reptile of sorts. Okay, yeah, the, the, the very looks very reptilian to me. John, how about you? What do you say? Yeah, I agree with Karen. I mean, it really looks like some type of reptile. Um, but does a reptile only have one eye? <laughs> I mean, does, I, I mean, I would I would assume, assume that most reptiles have two eyes, right? If I'm not mistaken, yeah. well, I, you, you know. But I don't know. We don't see the In other the side of the face. I was right, going to say, in right. defense of the reptile, <laughs> this right. is a side view. So, so John, while your point is, is well taken, uh, I also want to point out, neither one of you noticed, that, that the, the eye is kind of an orangish-yellow kind of, kind of color. Uh -huh. um, a lot of people noticed that. Uh, so they sent it to an expert, and the expert came back with a definitive answer to what this is. What we are looking at is a rock with a bottle cap on it. Rock, a bottle, a bottle no, cap on a rock. So. I, the, that, that's explains, what they that, that explains the one eye theory then. <laughs> I want to judge one eye theory. That's right. Karen doesn't think. Karen's still going to hang in with the reptilian. Yeah. yeah. Bottle cap on a rock, by the way, was also another Frank Zappa song. Um, so, so there you go. The um, um, a rock wouldn't be floating at the top of the water. <laughs> yeah, it seems it seems out of place there. In that yeah. sense, it seems out of place. That's right. I I know I know that was the uh, like I said. This was a huge huge story okay. on Reddit. Very um, very controversial. Uh, 
respond the the rock the rock with the bottle cap so a lot of people agree with with both of you that it looks like something other than what the experts said um okay now this was another popular story today let me watch my time here um so this one comes from china this is another pseudo monster let's say so uh, officials at the Hangzhou zoo <laughs> that's a good name the Hangzhou zoo in eastern china are denying reports, and I'm going to put the photo up here. This is what they're talking about. They're denying reports that some of their bears, the zoo's sun bears, which is a, an animal native to that area, are actually humans dressed in bear costumes. So we're looking at, and the reason why the, many people are saying that, we're looking at a photo of one, and, and this also comes from a video, a video capture. And this bear is standing straight up, its neck is extended, and, and I will tastefully say that its rear end looks like it's kind of bunched up, like it had been sitting in a bear skin for a while. Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. So, John, what do you say? Does that look like it might be a human in a bear costume? Absolutely. I, I think that's exactly what it is. It looks like uh, a bear skin or, you know, some bear, <laughs> a bear covering or whatever. But yeah, it, it doesn't look natural. It doesn't look like a natural bear, in my in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. Karen, Karen agrees. Karen, you agree? Totally agree. Yep. Totally agree. So they checked with, again, they sent it to experts and experts said that there's no way this could be a human um in a costume because it's thin it has good posture and they saw it eating vegetables um so i have to respectfully dispute that view but that's okay <laughs> well, you are not alone both of you there are plenty of people who swear that this is uh, a picture now uh, of a human in a bear costume the one on the right is the same animal by the way or, or human in a bear costume. So that one looks more like a bear. If I would show you that one yes. first, you would uh -huh. probably say, oh, that's a bear. And then, then when it stands up and you look at it and you say, oh, gee, maybe it's like that guy in the um, in the Lassie costume. You know, he's so good, or he or she is so good. <laughs> the humans, the in, is, humans in animal costumes this week, yes. yes. That's right, yeah, this is our theme for the week. Um, the other thing is that um, sun bears, sun bears are, are some of the world's smallest bears. And you can't tell from the perspective here, but that bear is probably only about three feet tall. So, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure. Sun bears are only found in Southeast Asia, uh, which a little bit of bear trivia for you here. Do you know what, a, what you would call a bear that is found in both the Northern and the Southern hemisphere? I don't. Bipolar. Bipolar. Oh. Horn, get the horn there, Paul. Where's your horn? <laughs> Thanks for reminding me that. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's see if I can get the. Uh, I, I wanted there was a story I wanted to do about the. Oh yeah, this the I've got a sport which will lead right into John's sports uh, segment here. So two world records. We love world records. First world record. I, I, in fact, I'll take. Take this bear down for a second here. I hope that doesn't mess with our sound. So Alistair Brown of Northern Ireland, this is our, our, our uh, another music story. He's a drummer. He set the Guinness World Record by playing the drums for more than 150 hours. I don't have the exact total, but 150 hours playing the drums um, is, is unbelievable to me. Uh, and, and when he was done, he put the drumsticks down and all he could say was, I never want to hear Wipeout again. Um, <laughs> now, for, for those of you too young to remember the reference, and I'll ask John, our trivia guy, John, get ready. Uh, Wipeout was a song that we heard many, many times in, in, our, in our rock and roll filled youth. John, do you remember the name of the band that first recorded Wipeout? Yes, Paul, I do. And the name of the band is The Safaris. Oh, very good. Yeah. John, John's got that one down pat. Uh, they wrote it and they recorded it. All instrumental except for the, the words wipe out, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. That, that's yeah. pretty... At the beginning, <laughs> as a matter of fact. Yeah. And then nothing but drums. Uh, you know, 
So, so that song came out, they wrote it in 1962. It came out in January of 1963. And they performed it on the Ed Sullivan show. And I didn't know this, but Ringo Starr saw them on the Ed Sullivan show and decided that he wanted to play the drums in a rock band. And that's when he called the Beatles up and said, I want to join your band. I want to be a rock drummer. Hmm. Wow, that's an interesting story. Uh, no, that didn't happen. <laughs> oh, okay. didn't happen so you're pulling a you're pulling a wool over our eyes, Paul, on that one. I'm okay. pulling your leg, pulling the wool, pulling pulling your costume off. I don't know what I'm doing there. Okay, <laughs> wipeout. Wipeout spent four months on the Billboard Top 100. I can't believe this. Nothing but a drum solo in 1963 reached number two on the chart. Um, unbelievable times we we lived in back then. Okay, final story here, and then we'll get to sports. Chinese man broke his own world record for the fastest time to solve three uh, Rubik's Cubes while juggling them. Shaved 13 seconds off his record. He solved three Rubik's Cubes while juggling in three minutes and 16 seconds. Unbelievable. I mean, and, and I heard he did it while chewing gum at the same time. So, you know. I think that's another record right there. Yeah. It, do you have a picture? Do you have a picture by any chance? Oh, yeah, I do have a picture of him. Yeah. I, there's a video that was unbelievable. Um, you know, he's he's doing it with um, uh, somehow this. There he is right there. So um, uh, he, oh, no, that guy's skipping rope. How did that get in there? Oh, I'm sorry. This guy's skipping rope. Um, we were, <laughs> I, boy, this is, this is, this is one for the record books for us, Karen. <laughs> you are, you're I out of it, sync, but that's it's okay. Not, we love you. The world record. This guy set the world record for skipping rope. So anyway, the juggler, I'm sorry, John, I don't think I have it. That's okay. Um, he has set a number of other Guinness world records, including solving cubes while juggling, uh, while upside down, underwater, and in groups. So he even wow. solves Rubik's Cube while in group, which sounds like the most boring party I could even think of, you know, a bunch of people sitting around solving Rubik's Cube. Anyways, okay, I think I better stop right now and turn things over to John um, before I get into more trouble. So uh, every week, uh, my old buddy John, dude, I've known since college, he uh, knows more about sports than I've forgotten or ever even wanted to try to learn. Uh, I ask him, John, find us a sport that fits with the theme of real news, sometimes strange, always funny, but make it a sport. And John, if you listen to our show, you know that every week he manages to find a weird sport, often topping the sport from the previous week. I also ask him to find one that we can participate in more often than not um, for legal reasons or insurance reasons, there's no way, or, or in tele common sense reasons, there's no way we would try any of these. This one is different, Karen. This one you might even try. So John, why don't you uh, introduce the story while I get your photos lined up for you? Oh, Paul, thanks for the great introduction. And uh, I do agree with you. This is a sport that all three of us could possibly be involved with and become, become participants. Um, so, Ladies and gentlemen, our sport this week is hobby horse racing. For those of you who are not familiar with hobby horse racing, let me explain. Hobby horses are children's toys that traditionally have a stuffed horse head stuck to a long wooden stick. While most kids give up riding hobby horses when they discover scooters, bikes, and cell phones, the people in Finland actually savor the joy of playing with a hobby horse well into adulthood. This is Finland. Really true. Did you say Finland? That's the in Finland. They yes. have nothing else to do in Finland to occupy their time. Yeah, well, they can't... Uh, so let me explain, Paul and Karen. This is especially true in Senochki, Finland, which is the oh. home of the great Finnish hobby horse championships which were held for the for the tenth time uh just a few weeks ago wow and Karen, tenth this, time. Karen, this tenth is, annual hobby horse championship yes okay okay so Karen, this is for you in particular established okay. by the finnish hobby horse association 
The Finnish Hobby Horse Championships attracted over 1,500 participants from Finland, uh, other Nordic countries, uh, other European countries, and even Australia. Wow. 1,500 uh, people riding hobby horses. While the typical enthusiast is usually a female between the ages of 12 to 25, the sport is open to all ages and genders. And at the championship, the contestants take part in different categories, such as show jumping, 80 centimeter, team, 80 centimeter team show jumping, high jumping, dressage, and Western riding. Wow, wow. Here's, a, here's a girl jumping, yeah. jumping. Western like, like riding, wow, that's gonna be a tough one. Really? Yeah, uh, yeah. Watching a grown woman run around a stadium while pretending to ride a horse head on a stick can be hilarious. It is also fascinating to watch. It gives kids and teenagers who don't have horses a chance to act like they do without the expense. In fact, most of the hobby horse heads, excuse me, so are pardon me, are sewn by hand, stuffed with wool, and mounted on a long stick similar to a broom handle. Riders also dress themselves in their hobby horses just like their real equestrians, wearing snaffles breastplates, halters, ropes, and even fly ears. <laughs> <laughs> now, hobby horse racing... I don't even want to know what those are. Okay. Well, <laughs> hobby horse racing in Finland has regional competitions in addition to the national championship competition. A video of the 2023 champ uh, co competitions went viral and now some people are pushing for hobby horse riding to become an official part of the Summer Olympic Games. I, I want to interrupt you for a second there, John. That, that, I watched that video, and it is unbelievable what, what these competitors are doing. <laughs> it sounds hard to believe, but um, the stuff that they're doing with these toy horses, the, the stuff that they go through, and it really does, you know, if you squint, and, and use your imagination. You can actually imagine that they're actually riding real horses. It's it's wild. And so Google it. Google hobby horse. What is it? Hobby horse championship. Hobby horse championship. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, while the photos show many parts of the competition, it's better, as you said, Paul, to Google hobby horse videos and watch a few oh, to get the full effect of the competition. Yeah. Now, riding hobby horses is more than just a hobby for the for the participants in the Finnish Hobby Horse Championships. It's actually affordable horseback riding. And the best part is they don't have to watch where they step. Oh. oh. That's an added I, feature, folks. Added feature. That's right. You're right about that. There we well, go. There's the You know, I have to tell you guys, my brother um in New York always wanted a pony, okay? And he told oh. my mother that when he was a little kid. So a couple of years ago for his birthday, I bought him a hobby horse. Now he oh, could cool. enter the competitions. He could, oh, yeah. Wow. Sure. sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, uh, it, 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 I'm, I'm undoubtedly, this is gonna be spreading, especially if people are talking about putting it in the Olympics. I, that's a stretch right there, but yeah. um, but 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 yeah, you know the uh, it, it's really everybody out there listening really check the video. The video is unbelievable. That uh, uh, in 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 adult, it's not just younger girls. It's adult. Uh, if you go on on um, Google, there's also videos of men, uh, adult men and kids uh, participating as well. So. Uh, you know, I thought that's when 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 John first said it, I thought, oh, this is going to be some silly little sport, but it's actually a pretty interesting thing. So, interesting, yeah, uh, yeah. In fact, so interesting, Karen and everybody out there, that I found evidence that John has participated in this sport. Uh -oh. I'm I, sure he has. <laughs> this was this was back when we were in college. I remember John talking about he had to go to some 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 uh, training. Um, and it turns out he was he was getting in shape to be a hobby horse rider. Now, 
that may not sound like you need to be in very good shape, but I have a photo of John and the shape he got into. And you know, John, John really, when he dedicates himself to something like, like bluff the co-host, as you'll find out in a minute, he really dedicates himself. So this is John, um, it, it, after oh, he was no. <laughs> to be to find the hobby, he was so he was so into it. His head actually looks like a, a horse, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah. Oh, that brings the, back many memories now, Paul. Yeah, right. Is that what oh, Annette sure fell in love with? I'm sure you would. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you wish you had that mystique, that physique now. Um, mm. So, oh. <laughs> this was when we were in college, and I remember seeing John built like that, and I thought, oh man. I should get into shape like that. So, um, so I followed. I secretly followed John to his training center. John even doesn't know this, and um, and I also participated in these workouts. And and some that John didn't do. For example, here's one right here. Um, so this is me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! I my oh head. My. I, I had to wear a head uh, a, a fake head because uh, I I wasn't as dedicated as John. Now. John dropped out. John John was a better student than I was, so he went back to school. I actually was going to participate in the hobby horse races, but unfortunately, doing this exercise right here, I got a Charlie horse. Oh, I was, I was unable to participate. So, anyways, hobby horse racing and memories from college, Very courtesy nice. of John Danella and What in the World of Sports. Hey, John, thanks again for all that information. Oh, yeah, you're welcome, Paul and Karen, and audience. Yeah. I think we'll bring that. Oh, uh, I'll bring that down here. There we go. Okay. So we've reached the end of uh, what in the world of sports. That means it's time for everybody's favorite weird news game. Bluff the co-host. Real simple game. I have three stories similar to the ones that we've been talking about all afternoon. One big difference. All of those were real. These stories may be real, may be a bluff. And it's up to John and Karen and all of you playing at home to, to, figured out. Is it real? Is it a bluff? I'll ask John and Karen and give their reasons, you know, see if you agree with them. Uh, wagering is allowed. So um, place your bets. John and Karen hand on the buzzer. There's no theme this week. So these are just three random stories from the news. Maybe. Story number one. If you're at the beach in New Zealand and you smell bacon cooking, don't go looking for a restaurant. It just means you're at one of the few beaches that caters to people who own pet pigs and like to take them along on their vacation. Pet pig owners objected when dogs were allowed on New Zealand beaches, but not their pot-bellied pigs. So they petitioned the National Department of Parks and Recreation, yes, there really is one, to allow pigs to swim and sunbathe if they have a license and they're on a leash. It took two years and over a thousand signatures, but the petition was accepted and pet pigs are now allowed on Kiwi beaches. Before you ask, pet Kiwis are still banned. Okay, so pet pigs are now allowed on New Zealand beaches to sunbathe and whatever else pet pigs do on the beach. Real or bluff? Karen, we'll start with you. Um, it sounds like it could be real so i'm gonna go along with that okay karen says it sounds like it's real so that's good enough for her john i'm sure needs photos but i don't have any so <laughs> uh, i agree with karen what I, you say, I john? also oh you, you just like that okay so we have two two uh votes for yes that's a real story let's check with the judges and the judges say sorry to both of you that's a bluff Oh, they don't, even, they don't even like pet pigs in New Zealand. So I don't oh, know if pet oh, pigs Karen, are allowed. Me, we'll be right back. Oh, okay. Well, we can talk to an empty chair. I know he went. It looks like he's going to get his pet pig. He's upset. <laughs> <laughs> his pet pig. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll answer for John if he doesn't get back in time okay. for question number. Okay. So the score is nothing to nothing. Uh, let's go to story number two. Hands on the buzzers. A fitness expert in Canada has come up with a push-up bra for men. No, it doesn't make man boobs look sexy. That's impossible. This new invention is an elastic bra-like tank top with pockets in the front for weights.
that is worn to make doing push-ups an even harder workout than it already is. The push-ups bra can hold special weights from 1 to 10 pounds on each side, and the inventor claims that doing 50 push-ups while wearing a 20-pound push-ups bra is better than bench pressing much heavier weights while also being safer and easier on your back and shoulders. There's no word on whether Dolly Parton has endorsed it, but Arnold Schwarzenegger gave it two biceps up. Okay, Karen, I'm going to ask, ask you, John hasn't come back yet. What do you say? The push-ups bra that you wear while doing push-ups for a better workout. Real or bluff? I think it's a bluff. It doesn't... Push-ups are difficult to do anyways. Why do you want to make them more difficult? Oh, okay. So Karen says it's a bluff. Push-ups are definitely difficult. That's right. Uh, John, John's invisible chair is there. So John would probably agree with Karen. John's a big sports guy. Uh, I'm going to say he, he would agree with Karen. So that's two for bluff. Let's check with the judges. And the judges say, congratulations. You're both right. That is a bluff. So that Very means good. the score is tied one to one. Wow. Now, if John were here, his chance. <laughs> well, now he's back. <laughs> oh, oh, here he comes. Here he comes. So, so, so John, uh, it, it looks Sorry like. Sorry about that, uh, folks. You thanks. just got Sarah, one. Guess what? You just, <laughs> we'll fill you in later. But the score is tied one to one. So way to go. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they, they might want to leave for this one as well. So <laughs> Points are doubled for three. So get right to it, hands on the buzzers. Um, you may know it as a company which makes computers, cell phones, and smart watches. But Apple once made sneakers, and a pair of these rare shoes is going up for auction this week with an estimated value of at least $50,000. The shoes are white with the familiar Apple logo and were made exclusively for employees in the 1990s as giveaways at sales conference and for excellent performance reviews. While a few have been sold before, this is the first time a pristine pair in the original box has been auctioned to the public. The auction house says there's no truth to the rumor that the souls have a compartment for an iPhone, which would make these a real pair of Maxwell Smart smart shoe phones. <laughs> okay. oh. So Apple shoes going up for sale, very rare for auction, $50,000. What do you say? Uh, we'll go with John here. Real or bluff? Well, you know, it sounds plausible, but um, I'm going to use uh, a, a certain degree of logic on this and say that that's not true. It's a bluff. Okay. John said John uses some logic and says it's a bluff. Karen, how about you? Well, I have to agree with John. I mean, I've been in the IT business for 30 plus years, never heard of this before. So I'm going to say it's a bluff. Okay. So Karen uses her IT background. So it's a bluff. John uses logic. He says it's a bluff. Let's check with the judges. And the judges say, Sorry about your career. It's over in IT. John, sorry about your logic. It doesn't work anymore. That's a real story. That's a real story. Wow. They actually, very rare, only a few hundred were ever made. They pop up occasionally, but, but very rarely. And this is the first pristine. $50,000. $50,000. I think part of it is the it's the old Apple logo with the multicolored, which I don't think they use. Oh, yeah. Anymore. Okay, sure. I know what you're talking about. Right. Right. So, but even Michael Jordan shoes, I don't know, do they sell for fifty thousand dollars? I guess I they probably. Yeah. yeah, they probably do. Okay, so that means that the score is tied. Boy, it's just like World Cup soccer, one to one. Yeah. So you're both. Winners. Yeah. You can move up to the next round. Uh, <laughs> play against Finland or somebody. <laughs> oh, there you, there you have it. International bluff the co-host. Okay. <laughs> All uh, right. Well, that means we've come to the end of uh, another another fascinating week of what in the world. Fascinating and also frustrating due to our sound problems, which we again, we uh, we apologize for that. Uh, for those of you who may have tuned in uh, live and were catching feedback and all that, uh, 
uh, for those of you on um, uh, li listening to us in your ear uh, that at a later date as we're recording, don't worry about it. Uh, we'll we'll have everything figured out by next <laughs> week. So I want to thank Karen Hale for all she does at nuclearradio.net. Even with the glitches in the gremlin, she manages to soldier through them. By next week, we usually have everything solved. Go to nuclearradio.net, check out our podcast, how to download it for free, uh, how to find it on YouTube, and then check out some of Karen, Karen's other great podcasts. They're uh, fits all your needs, so just check them out. As always, I thank my old friend John Danalo. John, uh, uh, thanks again for the sports, for being a good sport. I uh, uh, hope everything's okay over there. We, you know, we don't like talking to an empty chair. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I'm fine. I'm fine. It's just, just, just a, a, a temporary reason for me to to leave the room. <laughs> okay, I, we'll, we're not going to ask any more. We'll use our logic to figure it out. <laughs> Absolutely. Very good, Colin, Karen. Very good. Very good. And as always, I want to thank everybody out there, all of our fans who are listening to the podcast. It's the reason we're you're the reason why we do this. We have fun. We hope you have fun listening. Um, by all means, give us some feedback on Facebook. Send some emails to Karen. Uh, you know, do whatever it is. Do the likes and the follows and all that, so that we know that we know that you're out there. We know that you're you're listening. Even if we even if you don't, we do appreciate you. So, uh, and we hope you come back next week. That's right. And on that note, I think that we will uh, cut this one and call it a day. And we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Have a great week, everybody.